Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Skitch on Wheels here. Riding with my buddy up here. No name. I don't know him. It looks like he was on like a Honda XR or something. It's got street wheels on it. I'm going to give you a kind of a review of what I think of the Royal Enfield Himalayan since I've owned it. But yeah, I'm going to kind of go over what I like, what I don't like. I'm not going to base this information on anything else but what I know about me owning it. not going to give you a bunch of stats and figures and things like that. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what I think of it as a bike. I've had a dozen bikes in my life or maybe even a little bit more, I don't remember. And I think um, I'll just talk about it. But we're going to head out to Norris Dam today. Hey, thanks. We're going to head out to Norris Dam today and just take a take a look at the dam. Damn! And um, yeah, just kind of nice day out. Heading into Norris Dam. It's about 30 miles north of Knoxville. It's a nice little ride. So Norris Lake, uh, hundreds of miles of shoreline up here. Uh, they basically built a dam, flooded it and created this lake. So it's huge though. There's some fellow travelers. Nice, nice bikes. So we're gonna start below the dam and then work our way up to the top above the dam. Talk a little bit about the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Yeah, but yeah, Norse Lake, uh, they flooded it. I don't remember how many years ago it's been, but a lot of people scuba dive up here uh, because there's a lot of houses that are underwater. <laughs> so that's what I've heard. There's like a whole tree line, forest line that's underwater with homes um, that I'm sure were bought. Ooh, that dragonfly or something just about got me. So yeah, they flooded all this, uh, flooded flooded the lake, built the dam, flooded the lake, and so there's a lot of stuff that's uh, still underwater that's neat for scuba divers to go look at. So let's start below the dam here. Not a huge dam, but just what's necessary to make, like I said, hundreds of miles of shoreline. It's probably one of the, the best boating lakes around. A little chihuahua. Oh, uh -oh there's a little puppy. This side is definitely not the pretty side. We're going to head up here in a little bit and we'll talk about talk about the good things about the Himalayan up on the top and we'll kind of discuss some some things that aren't so hot about the Himalayan down here on the low side of the dam Up the shield here. Oh, that's so clear. So cool. Here we are at Norris Dam, uh, just above Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, I've got the Himalayan here. Let's talk about the good things about it. I got about seven or eight points, but let's talk about the bad things about it. Let's start with the bad things. Number one, the welds. Uh, the welds on this bike don't look good. Do they hold up? I guess they do. Uh, but you can tell that they're just not professional welds uh, from what kind of quality we're used to. So let's take a look at a few of them. I'm not a welder by any means, okay? But the welds that are put down just aren't very nice or attractive in my opinion. Number two, the second thing I don't like. I guess it's not something I don't like. It's just something I'll never use. I think it was a poor attempt at a navigation system. It's on the 2022 and above. You know, we all have our phones. We all have 
uh, Google Maps now that does a good job. We've I'm got... not sure why they put so much effort into this bike, into the navigation system. Um, it basically drains the battery of my phone when I hook it up and use it. I've used it one or two times. It just shows arrows. It shows you turns, where you turn. It's not really a map type system. And I'm not sure if it really is used at all by anybody. Let me know in the comments if you use this system, but I've not used it but one time. Let's turn it on, I can show you. It does give a quick little logo and that looked like a little million dollar bogan head there. <laughs> I don't think I noticed that before, but yeah, I don't even have it set for the correct time. So this navigation system just doesn't cut it for me. It's uh? so the third thing I don't like about the bike and none of these are critical, believe me. But the third thing is, is it's a good road tire. But it's not a very good off-road tire. I've ridden a little bit on the Transamerica Trail on it, uh, just briefly, a lot of rock, a lot of gravel, and the front wheel just was kind of fishy. So I think there's some other things out there that are better, some other brand names I've heard people use that give you a whole lot better bite on off-road. Uh, so that would be the third thing is the, the quality of the tire for off-road, I think is limited. The fourth thing is this kickstand spring. I hear this spring breaks quite a bit. Over time, I've noticed that this kickstand has continued to kind of spread out, spread out, spread out, and stretch to where the bike actually leans a little bit more. So I'd say the kickstand is a weak point. You need to watch that. All right, number five is the brakes. I hear a lot of complaints about the brakes on this bike, and um, I put it in here as a negative, but I don't see it. Um, you know, it's got a big front rotor up front, uh, it seems to stop well for me. Um, you know, a lot are probably complaining about the rear brake. Yeah, it's okay. I guess brakes can always be upgraded. That's the only reason I'm putting it on as a negative is because a lot of people have complained about it. But from a guy who rides a Harley Davidson Lowrider S where the back brake system is basically me dragging my feet. Same thing, there is no back brake. Number six is the headlight. Yeah, I like the look of this headlight. I think it looks cool. Um, kind of retro, kind of old school looking. I like it, but yeah, it's just not bright enough. There, you know, when I ride at night, you can't see very well. Uh, I don't mind the, the high and the low. They do a sufficient job, you know, as far as differentiating between those, but it could be a whole lot brighter. I think to fix the problem of the headlight, I'll just do an LED upgrade to it. That should solve the problem. Those are the negatives in my opinion. It's time to get on the bike. Let's go to the top of the dam. Let's go over the things that I do like about the Himalayan. Here we are on top of Norris Dam. Now let's go through some of the good points about the Royal Enfield Himalayan. All right, first point about the good stuff. This bike looks amazing. Uh, I get a lot of compliments on it when I stop. A lot of people like how it looks, wondering what it is, what kind of bike it is. I, I think that Royal Enfield did an excellent job with the design of this bike. 
I'll say this though, there is a lot of people out there that disagree with me. <laughs> a lot of folks think this is an ugly duckling bike. Um, I don't see it, I don't know. And maybe my point of view is totally, totally wrong because I like the bike and I own the bike, but I think it has a really good look to it. So number two, I know we talked about the tires as being a bad point, but the wheel itself is a good thing. It's 21 inch wheel. It's a little bigger wheel than you find on some things like the KTM uh, 390 Adventure. It's just a little bit more stable. It sits up like a bigger bike. It feels like a bigger bike. Granted with the right tire on there, it's gonna handle a lot better. I feel like they did the right thing by putting a bigger front wheel on this bike. All right, number three. This bike handles amazing. I don't know what they've done to make it do that, whether it's the front wheel or not, but I'm telling you, this bike is a great handling bike. I've had a dozen bikes and, and I can do anything on this bike that I would do any other bike that I've ever owned. I feel like the handling on this bike is set up perfect. Um, maybe it's a smaller engine, smaller power, and I just feel more confident with it, but I've had no issues with this. I feel like I could turn this bike anywhere and it'll go there, so. All right, number four to the good points. That motor right there actually is its lack of power. I know that was a negative for me, but at 411 cc's, 25 horsepower, a new rider, when they twist that throttle, they're not gonna get in trouble with this bike. Uh, they're not gonna be pulling the front wheel. They're not gonna be doing anything crazy on this bike. So negative and positive. For an experienced rider, a bit of a negative. For a new rider, it's definitely a positive. Number five, this seat. For a factory seat, this is a pretty darn comfortable seat. I've ridden three or four hours at a time on this seat. I've had no problems. It's been comfortable. It has plenty of grip. It doesn't throw me up into the tank. I think Royal Enfield did an excellent job on this seat. It's comfortable. It holds you in the saddle where you need to be. I really like this seat. Number six, the windshield ain't bad, all right? Uh, it might look tiny, and I'm sure there's some taller ones and better ones that can perform a little bit better, but for stock, I don't need anything else. And I've been on the highway a lot with this bike, at least not interstate, but I've been on a lot of roads where I've needed that shield. I've ridden in 28 degree weather on this bike, and believe me, you need a shield, and it seems to do really well. Uh, if you look, it's already caught some bugs that would have been right into my chest. Right. Next up, number seven. This bike gets really good gas mileage. I've used this bike as a commuter. Um, I know that their website will say 39, 40 miles per gallon. I'm telling you, I'm getting 50 or better on this bike. Every single tank, I'm getting 50 miles per gallon or better. So I don't know what I'm doing, but it's, it's working for me. Last but surely not least is the price of this bike. You can get this bike out the door most places around seven grand. Some are getting it for less, some maybe a tick more. I'm happy with a brand new bike that I've been able to ride, have no problems with for $7,000 out the door. Add to that a three year unlimited mileage warranty. You can't beat that. So value, this bike has a ton of value in it. So my last point is this bike is affordable for me and I'm very happy with what I've gotten for my $7,000. Is it a perfect bike? Oh, no way, it's not a perfect bike. Is it a fun bike? It's absolutely one of the funnest bikes I've ever ridden. That's my take on the Royal Enfield Himalayan. After 1,500 miles, about six months worth of riding, it's definitely worth the money I paid for it. I've had a lot of fun with this bike. I'm gonna continue to have fun with it. Great ride today, beautiful scenery out here. I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna enjoy it for a few minutes more before heading home. Thanks for watching this review. You stay tuned, we've got one more thing with Zoe. It's Special Olympics day. Who's going, who's running, who's throwing a softball? This is the track you'll run on. to the field and to our cauldron to light it. All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. Far, Zoe, far. Trying to throw it to him. Nice. Very nice. Nice. Throw number two. Throw number two. Double J.
All right, here we go, sweetie. Here we go. Get it out, Get it out. 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 Last throw, make it a good one. Make it a good one. Make it a good one. Oh, look at the cameras as you throw. Nice. All right, last throw. There it goes, Ollie. High five. Yeah. Go Zoe! Go! In third place, we have Zoe. Let me see these medals, sis. Woo!